I'm just going to go through and explain this again. Ladies and gentlemen, the main important thing, if you guys just want to follow along with steps, all right, the main important thing you're doing is we want to get this down to two equations with two variables. So right now I have one, two, three equations. So I want to get this down to two equations with two variables. Now to do that, what we need to do is we need to eliminate one of our variables. So we have x, y, or z. Now which variable do we want to eliminate? Well, it doesn't really matter which variable you want to eliminate. But I'll tell you, the best variables to choose to eliminate are ones that have a coefficient of 1 or negative 1. And the cool thing that we notice is x, y, z, they all, in one of these equations, have a 1 or a negative 1 as a coefficient. So for this problem, it really doesn't matter which one we choose. Does anybody want to try one that they did in their homework to maybe see if they got it right or wrong or how they did it? Or does anybody care? Want to try one? Nobody cares which one to do. I mean, yes. I would, which one? Um, which variable do you want to eliminate, though? Um, X. OK. So let's take a look, ladies. If I want to eliminate x, all right, that means I can multiply this by a multiplier of negative 2, right? So let's take an equation number 1 and number 2. So for equation 1, I have 2x plus y plus 3z equals negative 2. However, I am going to, to eliminate the x between 1 and 2, I'm going to multiply equation 2 by negative 2, all right? So when I do that, equation 2 now becomes negative 2x plus 2y plus 2z equals positive 6. Has everybody followed me with that? I multiply negative 2 times my second equation. Yes? You could have just added them up together, yes. But we asked to use the x variable, so I'm just on for x. But yeah, if you wanted to use y, then you could have just added the two equations up, right? You didn't even need to multiply by multiplier. Yeah, that would have been, probably would have been simpler for the first two, but it might not have been simpler for the next two. I don't know. Well, I do know, but I'm just trying to go through it as far as a student would go. It doesn't matter what you pick. One might be easier than the other, but as long as you follow the same process, it's OK. You don't have to like um, get stressed out if like, oh, is this the right one or not? They're all correct. Some might be a little bit easier, though, than others. Yes? Why would you multiply the equation by 2? The reason why I multiply by 2 is because now I have a positive 2x and a negative 2x. So when I take these two equations and add them, I now get a 0x, which means my x's have now been eliminated. Does that make sense? So what Dylan was saying is, why didn't you just add them up? Well, I could have, but the student told me to eliminate the x's. But you, if you just would have added them up, then you would have eliminated the y's, which is OK, too. It doesn't matter. It's OK. Whichever way you, you see it and you want to roll with it, that's fine. So we take our resulting equation, and I say that I'm going to label that as a. So I write a over here. a is 3y plus 5z equals 4. Now the important thing to do, ladies and gentlemen, is once you, saw, once you eliminated x between the first two, you now have to eliminate x between the second two. So you can't eliminate x and then eliminate y. You have to remain consistent. So even though it might be easier to saw, eliminate um, y in the first two, it might be easier to eliminate x in the other two. I don't, you know, you, you just can't say, oh, whatever one's easiest for one is always going to be the easiest equation. So now I'm going to take equation two and equation three. So equation two, well, let's write out equation three. All right, so between equation two and equation three, to eliminate the x, what do I need to do to equation two? Multiply it by, let's call it by my negative 3 this time, right? Because if I multiply it now by negative 3, I'm now going to get a negative 3x plus 3y plus 3z equals positive 9. And then I'm just going to rewrite equation 3, which will be 3x minus 2y plus 3z minus equals negative 12. That's 112. So now I add these up. And again, I eliminated my axis. I get y plus 6z equals negative 3. 
So I call that equation B. Okay. So now, ladies and gentlemen, we have two equations with two variables, right? Wendy, do you see that? When you have two equations with two variables, now what is so important? Now what we can do is we can use elimination, substitution, whatever you want to do. I would probably say, oh, let's use substitution. Let's substitute y, right? Let's solve for y and substitute it in. So I could say y equals negative 3 minus 6z. Plug that in. You 3 times negative 3 minus 6z plus 5z equals 4. So when I plug in, when I solve b for y equals for y, I plug it into the other equation and I eliminate, I get z equals negative 1. Then, since I know what z is, now I can plug in negative 1 in for z. And I get y minus 6 equals negative 3. y equals 3 when I solve there. So now, ladies and gentlemen, once I know what y is, and once I've already solved for z, so do you guys see how putting it in two systems, two equations, helps you find these two variables? So now once you know the value of two variables, all you need to do to find the third is plug them back into one of these equations. And it doesn't matter which equation you guys want to plug it in for. I'm going to pick this one because it has the least amount of exponents. So therefore, I have x minus 3 plus 1 equals negative 3. x minus 2 equals negative 3. x equals negative 1. So your solution is x equals negative 1, y equals 3, and z equals negative 1. OK, does everybody see that? See the steps? Yes. Yeah, we did. We took A and B. And what I did was I did substitution. You could have done elimination. You don't have to, though. But I did substitution to get my one variable. And then once I got my one variable, I plugged it in to find the other one. So if you want to continue with elimination, you can do that, too. I just decided to get rid of the one variable by using substitution. Does that make sense? What I'm talking about? I just use substitution just to kind of change it up to remind you guys you can use both. All right? Does everybody understand how I did the first step, though? Yes. Because there's different ways you can do this, as Dylan pointed out. You didn't have to eliminate x. You could have eliminated the y's. And tell you the truth, for this problem, probably eliminating the z might have been the easiest. Because what do you do? You just multiply by 3, the front equation, and then you multiply both these two equations by this middle one. Right? So probably even eliminating the z probably would have been the easiest. Because you only have to multiply the middle equation by 3 once, and then you add that to both of those top and, top and bottom equations. So I probably, if I was doing this problem, I probably would have multiplied by z. But it doesn't matter. Either way, you're going to get the same answer, whichever way you choose. All right? So just pick a variable, preferably the variable that has a coefficient of 1 or negative 1, and roll with it. All right? Got it.